Hello yet again and welcome back to Compositing with Beyond Typicals. This is episode 6 and in this episode we're going to focus on safety type projects. And Beyond Typicals is the perfect tool to communicate your transportation safety projects and compositing your safety projects made in Beyond Typicals is just an option to take it to the next level as far as realism. Uh, communicating what you're trying to do goes to your stakeholders or the public or whoever you're trying to work with on this project. So in this first project, we have a street here from Boston. And again, if you're gonna take a photo, you wanna do it um, in a way where there's as few obstructions as possible, because you, you might have to remove those using Magic Eraser on the Pixel or some other AI erasing tool. But you also wanna capture a straight section. And that's what we have here in this image. You'll see here we have some shadows and I'll show you what we do to deal with that. And let me show you what this looks like with our project. And again, as a reminder, things look darker in Beyond Typicals than they do in the final renders. But if you zoom out, you can see what we have here as far as our section, pretty simple. And you can see here we have this building to block out the shadow. And we're trying to match that the, the image is in the shadow, but you can see here in the distance, these cars are in the sun. And so we want to match something simple similar to that. So we can show, you can always go back to the camera if you've saved it by going to this button. And again, as a reminder, I'm, I'm linking these projects, these BTIP files in the YouTube video if you want to download them and check them out for yourself. Uh, a few other notes about this project. You can see here we have this buffer lane, again, focusing on safety. And that's, I mean, that's super important in transportation, but there's more emphasis lately on making sure especially pedestrian cyclists and even uh, those riding scooters are going to be safe with the traveling public. In this scenario, we have a shared use with a bike and a bus lane, which sometimes you'll see. And so we have here this, this red painted area. We have these pavement markings and I can show you what those look like. And in this render, we're also just focusing on an image render, not on anything animated. And so you can see here, each of these is a different decal, and you can grab these from assets and go into decals, or you can also search. Actually, sorry, these are under pavement markings, and you can just drag those into your, your model, and then you can scale them from there. You can see here we also have this cyclist. Again, this is just a still render, and we want to promote that this cyclist is using this lane. And you'll also notice here too, that this cyclist isn't wearing a helmet and I don't want to distract anyone by saying that. And so I just kind of had the head out of frame. We do have cyclists with helmets, but I liked uh, the way the cyclist looked for this image. For the, the red paint to, to do that, it's gonna be difficult with the standard asphalt, but if you go to 36 asphalt dry, you're gonna have a lot better results because there's not as much black in there. Or you could use something like um, any of the concretes. They'll also, Go red but again if you use the the black asphalt it's not going to look as red and so you want to go to one of those asphalt dries or a concrete to get the color that you look and then you can uh, you can change that color using these toggles and then uh, we have one of the concrete materials here with this striped buffer section and this is actually a buffer section that you can get from the section library and you can just drag it in and and then these buffers they have the markings the white and the yellow and then once you have them in you can change the spacing like this and then just one other note on these is you'll see that the labels are lower and they're white and that's just to match the contrast to help them stand out a little bit more against the dark background that we have here and we just want good composition composition. We want to both communicate what the projects do, doing the lane widths, all of that, but also we want to make it look aesthetically pleasing. That's often my own goal. And so this is how the final render turned out. All right, for this Next safety project that we're showing with a composite Beyond Typicals project. This is one of my favorite all-time 
composites that I've done. This is another image in Boston. And I've talked about foreground elements before. And this one, it doesn't look like there's, there are any, but there actually are. If you look very closely down here at the bottom, this stripe is. Uh, there are two different, and you can see it there. And then we have a stop right here, so the, the cars come and they stop. You want to be mindful of a project like this from a compositing standpoint, that you want to probably just render it when the cars are pulling to a stop, and then you just want to end your render, or you want to edit that out, because it's going to kind of break the illusion when those cars go through the plane and they have that transparency and you see through them. Over here we have similar as before, we have a buffered um, bike lane and then we have these delineators and those are all avail available as assets and you can do the drop down, select those and you can choose whichever one that you want and then you can change the, the, uh, the spacing and so on to get the, the exact standard that you're looking for and then with the bike lane, we have these alternating green, green patterns along with the the bike marking and the the rectangle green markings you can do here as a secondary asset or a primary asset and just repeat them and then you can also um, use the bike lane marking that's a default of the bike lane in here and then you can change the marking spacing depending on where you want that and you'll see this guy he's just hanging out here again you want to be mindful of the cars going through if you showed this too long it would be distracting because you're just like why isn't this guy moving forward um, again we have the lower labels here and we have some pedestrians we have some standing and talking and then we have some walking you want to be mindful of them not walking through this the static pedestrians and uh, that can very be very distracting so just be mindful of that and then we have some street lights all matched to this existing photo that we can see. Uh, let me just show you what that looks like, like this. And then you'll see here, this is what the final render, or what the final um, image looks like within Beyond Typicals. Again, the, everything's gonna be a little bit darker, but now I'm transitioning to the final render so that you can see how cool this one turned out. All right, in this next example, we have something very basic, but this is just a residential street. And this is actually from Carson City, my days a long time ago working for Nevada Department of Transportation, and we live near here. And so this is a just a simple example of safety, what we're trying to communicate here. We have a speed bump, and this is another static image. And so we have this, this mother-daughter combination here that we've placed to be in the right perspective. And then we just have a car here looking like it's gonna to go to the speed bump. If you wanted, you could also move it forward and then just tilt it a little bit if you wanted to just emphasize that this is a race speed bump. Like that, but in, um, I opted to just have it back in my render when I did this. And so there really is not a lot to this as far as just these two sections, pavement markings, a speed bump, and these uh, people and vehicle assets. But one other thing I want to point out about this one, again, I'll zoom out to show what this looks like. Just as reference, this is 200 feet long. But you can see I have all these buildings over here because I wanted to match the shadows in the image that you can see back here, or at least something close because that's going to really help blend your project. And so if you grab those buildings and then you go back to your camera preset, then you can move those here, again, location, and you can see this there in the middle of your screen, you can see that that going through. And if you wanna match the cameras, what you do is you just go to this and you might wanna pull it in front, to front, and then you wanna change the opacity so that we can kind of overlay the shadows. And then from there, we can, again, kind of get a chance to match that shadow in the different directions. And that's also gonna cast shadows on our pedestrian assets as well. So this is how the final render turned out. All 
All right, in this final example, this is an existing propose showing how you can make a safe crosswalk in an existing uh, road configuration. And so we have that, those both here. We have existing and then we have this new crossing. And you can do that by, and we have tutorials on our website. If you go to beyondcad.com slash tutorials, you can see some of that. But all of these are just assets that we've placed here in the model and got them all where we want them to be. And Beyond Typicals is just a typical section creator. It will take a section and then extend it out, but you can do some cool mid block crossings. But with that said, you can't do any sort of um, intersections, at least not at this time. So we have some kind of a shared use lane over here. We have pedestrians going one direction and we have cyclists coming the other direction. And then we have these um, these spandrels here to connect these rectangle segments. And there are various ways you can do those. The way I recommend is you go to assets and you wanna to go to dynamic. And then you go down here to these, we call them building blocks. And you, you kind of, you create the dynamic asset, you drag it in. And then from there, you can select it and you can change the scale in all directions to get the size that you want, and then you can also change the texture using this drop down too. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go again to our camera. You'll see here sometimes I have a lot of presets, and that's just because it took a while to get the right view. And then also, as I'll show you here in just a second, uh, you can do multiple views with in multiple photos in the same BTIP file. So again, existing, and this is the new crossing. And this stuff like this turns out really cool in video, especially when you have cars stopping at the stoplight. One other tip too, sometimes if you run a project for a while, you'll see the cars, they're just basically not even moving. The signal timing is not enough to really get them through. If you want to reset it, you just down here, this simulation on off, you can just reset that. And then in a minute or two, the car is going to be back to where you want them to be. So if we go to the other view, you can see when I switch it here, it looks weird because I don't have the right cameras turned on. But we can turn those on by doing this. And then we want to bring this camera to the back. Sorry, this image to the back. And you can see here we've tried to match the lighting. We have these flashers, which are really nice in an animated video as well. You might not be able to communicate that as well with the static photo. And, uh, and then we have the, the trees and everything in the background. And again, we have the existing and proposed in the same BTIP file, we have multiple views and multiple photos in the same BTIP file as well. And so this is kind of a more complex project, but something, it just gives a really good example of, of the types of projects and how broad the types of projects, especially the safety type projects here where we're trying to communicate, look, we're putting in a crosswalk, we're putting flashers, we're putting markings, we're doing all the things that we need to do to make this as safe as possible. So this is how it turned out. If you need uh, help from us, make sure to reach out on the contact us form on our website at beyondcad.com. And I will talk to you in the next one.